Hey, hey, I'm back three days in a row. Let's get right into it because 27, 29 minute videos, who wants to watch those? Anyways, first thing up. Next movie we watched in the Nightmare series was Nightmare on Elm Street 4. The Dream Master. Um, so this is the first movie where characters carried over into into the next uh, edition. Nancy Thompson, uh, like I said in my last review, she showed up in Nightmare on Elm Street 3 after being in the first movie. So there there was a recurring character there in kind of a, a role there, but not back-to-back -back sort of movies. So this is the first time that's happened. And, and the character in question here is Kristen Parker. So it's been a year since Nightmare on Elm Street 3, and Kristen uh, and the other survivors of the asylum, uh, Kincaid and Joey, are life is back to normal they're out in in back at school and nothing's happened but then one night Kristen starts having dreams of Freddy again and so she pulls Kincaid and Joey into her dream and uh and nothing happens though and the next day at school they're like what the hell that's over leave it over uh so then Kristen kind of is like okay whatever and uh and, and but uh it persists Freddy keeps coming back and uh and and terrorizing her and one night she's she's staying up and not going to sleep because she doesn't want to face him and Kincaid and Joy get sucked into a dream and they get killed so the next day at school when they don't show up Chris, Kristen's just like beside herself she knows something's happened and uh because of this later that day her mom gives her sleeping pills and uh and eventually she falls asleep and she gets offed by Freddy now she has some other friends that she uh, she has at school besides Joey and and Kincaid uh, her best friend Alice um, uh, her boyfriend Rick who is Alice's uh, big brother and then a couple of other girls Sheila and uh, Debbie and uh, and then also the girl that Alice is interested in named Dan does Dan is also kind of a part of their group so she's got these other friends and after um, after Kristen meets up with Freddy in, in this in this dream where she does get killed she pulls Alice into the dream with her and as Kristen is in the process of being killed she passes her powers along to Alice so Alice now has the ability to, to pull people into her nightmares uh, to help so and, and the reason Freddy kind of um, needs needs this to happen is that Kristen was the last of the Elm Street children so he had to kind of pull in in the process of killing Kristen this new batch of teenagers that he could now terrorize which he's free to do now so Alice tells Rick and uh and, and all her other friends about Freddy and of course they're skeptical at first but then all of a sudden they start getting into these nightmares and they start dying too so Rick dies um and Sheila dies and uh, so eventually as as time goes along and her friends start dropping off one by one uh, the other the survivors start being a little more okay this is serious business but also as this is happening and, and these other kids are dying Alice is gaining their powers as well so Rick was like into martial arts and stuff and was really confident so she gains this ability to, to fight and uh, and her friend Sheila was really super smart, so she gains the brains of Sheila. So in the end, it's her and Dan are the only survivors, and they have to find a way to um, to kill Freddy, who they thought was dead at the end of the last movie when they buried his bones, but he keeps coming back like a repeating shit, right? So they got to find a way to uh, either succumb themselves or or uh, live to dream another day. So really good movie. I, I liked it. The... Um, I like that it was kind of a recurring like some people came back even though the actress that played Kristen was different because it was Patricia Arquette who played her in Nightmare 3 so I'm assuming she was going on to bigger things at that point so they had a new girl come in to play the Kristen character uh, but I, I like that carryover from one movie to the next uh, even though all the characters that carried over did die and passed the torch on to a new set of characters it was nice to ha have that kind of continuity I, I like that so um, this is one of my other favorite ones in the series. This is a really good, a really good movie. Next up, Mork Terminator, Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines. This takes place ten years after Terminator Two, and Sarah Connor has died. John Connor is basically living off the grid, so no, he cannot be tracked. Uh, but Skynet sends. Um, a new term, yet another new Terminator unit, so even more advanced than the T-1000 from Terminator 2, 
to not go after John because they can't find him, but to track down all of the generals in his resistance and kill them to, you know, weaken their, their cause eventually. So uh, the, the new, this new Terminator unit's going about this. But in the meantime, John's wife in the future, Kate, um, has sent back a T-101 unit taking on the form of, form of Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, to stop th this new TX model from killing all of John's generals. Um, so it's, again, you've got these two Terminators coming together. In the meantime, John, who is on uh, on the run and, and trying to stay low, uh, ends up at this uh, veterinary clinic, which is actu in actuality owned by Kate, one of his generals who does end up becoming his wife. Um, and they used to go to high school together, so they know each other, but at this point in time, in the, in the present, they don't know that they eventually get married and stuff. So, uh, th they, John ends up stealing, stealing some medication from uh, her clinic and she catches him doing it. So she puts him in a cage and, uh, and is like, what are you doing? And then eventually both Terminator units show up and Kate is like, what the hell? And John's like, oh no. So they end up having to come together as they flee with this T-101 uh, they, as they flee from the TX and get in another big car chase featuring another big truck. And this one's a crane. It's huge. It's taken up, taken out so much stuff. Um, and so eventually they escape and they go to Sarah's, uh, the mausoleum where Sarah Connor is supposedly buried, but in her coffin is just a cache of tons of weapons. So, uh, she wanted to prepare John and they are informed by the T-101 at this point that Judgment Day was not subverted by their efforts uh, in, in Terminator 2. It was just delayed. And it's supposed to happen that very day at 6.18 p.m. So the T-101's unit, or T-101 unit's uh, job in, in this whole thing is to get them to Mexico to escape the fallout of the nuclear strikes that Skynet initiates later that day. Uh, but they are like, no, we're not doing that. We're going to stop this from happening. So... Kate's dad happens to be a general in the Air Force and uh, and is also in charge of um, that final call of letting Skynet have control of their defense network, So, which is just about to happen after this TX arrived. So instead they have the T-101 take them to her father and they beg and plead for him to not enact Skynet. But it's already too late. Their system has a virus. Uh, things have already been set in motion. The TX shows up, kills her father, and uh, he gives them, as he's dying, the location of what they believe to be Skynet's main um, core, I guess. And uh, they go there as a last-ditch effort to um, destroy it and hopefully s stop Judgment Day from happening later on that afternoon. And uh, But there's a bit of a twist at the end, and uh, where where they are being sent by Kate's father is not exactly what they had in mind so I'll just leave it at that and you have to watch uh, the movie to see what happens but it's uh it's a great ending uh something you didn't really see coming and uh just again tons of it's not as good as T2 because T2 is just so good but <clears throat> there's just so much destruction and chaos and violence it's fantastic and uh the TX unit is a female in this one played by Chris Christana Locken or something like that, which I don't know if she ever went on to do much more after that because I haven't heard her name, but she's super hot. So it's always nice when you have a nice hot female Terminator. It just makes it um, even better in my opinion, which the Terminator TV show, um, Summer Glau plays a Terminator unit in that show. And it's, I think it only lasted two seasons or whatever, but it's fantastic. So I would highly recommend that as well. If you're into the Terminator franchise like we are. Next up, another one of the Marvel Knights animated films. Uh, this one is The Eternals. I've heard of The Eternals before, but know absolutely zilch about them. So this was uh, this was the one I was kind of looking most forward to seeing because I just had no idea. Like I I I knew the Extremis story from Iron Man, and uh, you know I'm familiar with the Wolverine character and stuff. But this one I, I was totally in the dark on. So as it starts off, the main character in the in the film is is a, a, a young aspiring doctor named Mark Curry. Um, he's just coming off a grueling shift at the hospital where this guy named Ike Harris approaches him and is like, so do you know that there's a lot more going on in the world than you think and you're actually a, you know, a superhuman with uh, uh, the power of super speed and basically you cannot be destroyed and this guy's like, dude, I just had the longest shift in my life. Get lost, Looney Tunes, right? So then he goes home and uh, eventually this Ike Harris guy shows up on his fire escape up in 
in his building and and he's like dude you got to listen to me this i'm being for real i'm not crazy and again mark is like get lost before i call the cops but then his curiosity is kind of peaked when he thinks he sees ike fly away off his fire escape uh, instead of just going down the ladder like a normal person so he is kind of like huh at the same time uh there's a young woman named cersei uh who is struggling to pay her rent and get by in life and she uh, is just waiting for her big break to come along in the party planning business which is what she wants to do with her life and she she gets that uh she she meets mark by happenstance and uh the two hit it off uh quite well and she invites him to what she is hoping is her big break break in the party planning business when she's throwing a, a shindig for a guy named druig who is uh he rules over a province in russia that is not well known and, and the party is uh there to get them a bit of uh get the name out and, 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 and help people become aware of, of, of that area and, and what it has to offer and stuff like that. So uh, she invites Mark to come along and he goes. And um, But uh, unfortunately, the party is raided by a terrorist group who wants to take a bunch of scientists hostage. And uh, Mark diffuses the situation when all of a sudden he uses his super speed that he didn't know he had to disarm the terrorists and stuff like that. So afterwards, he's like, Okay, yeah, I believe this guy, at least in part, uh, because that was just crazy and unnatural, and I have no idea how I did it and what the hell just happened. So, uh, he he gets the the four one one on the situation. So basically, thousands and thousands and millions, whatever years ago, um, a a race of beings called the Celestials came to Earth, and they created two kind of groups of beings. One, the Eternals, um, which is what Mark and Ike are. There are a hundred Eternals, and they're basically these these superpowered beings that have all these different abilities, and they're basically you can't kill them. They're almost invincible. They were uh, placed on Earth to watch over it and make sure nothing bad happened to it. Now, the other race of beings that the Celestials created were Deviants. So they were basically early man mutated, and 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 it, during that process, it didn't come out as was planned, and all basically these disfigured horrible monsters came out of it and so there's tons and tons of deviants across the world and the eternals were there to basically keep them in check and stop them from you know turning the world into chaos so uh so that's the way it's been for a long long time but recently the eternals have kind of disappeared they don't know who they are they've lost their memories and now the deviants are starting to rise again because back when the celestials were on earth there was one celestial who favored the deviants over the eternals and it was put into basically a slumber beneath the earth's crust by the other celestials so it couldn't cause any problems on that in, the, in that kind of regard and uh but for some reason there has been events placed in motion by some people that are causing this uh celestial to finally wake up and uh if it does wake up it could mean disaster for the earth so uh, ike is trying to get all the other eternals back so that they can combat this threat and save the world so that's kind of the story and stuff uh, Ant-Man and uh, Iron Man factor into the end of it a little bit, but mostly it's just all learning about all these eternal characters and, and what they're all about. So very cool story, and, and so far it has been my favorite just because it's something so different and, and something that I haven't experienced yet in terms of characters and story and stuff like that. So it was uh, it was a good one. Next up, finally finished the original Ratchet and Clank for the PS2. Uh, I had only played one Ratchet and Clank, or no, I guess two Ratchet and Clank's, Clank games before this. I I played the second one in the series, which is called, uh, where is it here? I know it's here somewhere. It's called like, ah, uh, there it is, Going Commando. That's the second game in the series. So basically there's four games on the PS2 and then four more on the PS3 that are like a future series. Uh, that takes place in the future and then there's of course the reissue on the PS4 like the reimagining after the movie that came out a number of years ago so I kind of started with the second game and also played Secret Agent Clank on the PSP um, so I, I was familiar with the series but I finally thought I would uh, you know get back to this the origins and play the first game and then start going through them in order so the story behind Ratchet and Clank is that uh, the main character Ratchet is uh, a Lombax which is like a creature that's like part lemur part fox part cat part whatever it's all these different animals that you 
it's not he's not actually made up of those animals but in terms of you know what he looks like he's kind of a, a hybrid of all these different types of creatures and uh he lives on the planet velden and he's very mechanically inclined inclined sorry uh now he's getting by on velden being ratchet and in the meantime on the other side of the galaxy there is uh dark tidings going on a the um the ceo of an evil corporation named uh oh god what's his name now i forget oh uh chairman Dr vice chairman drek or something like that drek is his name he his planet has basically fallen to pollution because they'd have uh treated it like crap so he's looking to get a new world for his people the blarg and in order to do so he is raiding all these other planets in the galaxy and kind of taking parts of them to build his own world where eventually once the world is complete he's going to destroy another world and put his new world in that former world's orbit uh to create this new paradise for his people uh so he's totally mean totally bad and uh as that's going on also in another part of the galaxy where these security bots are produced by uh, Blarg Industries, uh, one of them comes off the line and it's a defect. It's small, uh, it's super smart, it's just not there to blast things, so it's basically thrown into the scrap pile, but before it can be destroyed, this little robot comes to life and he's like, ah, oh, so he escapes the planet and uh, he's pursued, but eventually crash lands on Velden right outside Ratchet's uh, home, and so the two kind of come together and, and Clank explains what's going on. So the, the two form this kind of tentative partnership with their own motivations for going out and helping to stop Drac and save the world and such. Um, Clank is a little more uh, virtuous and uh, and selfless in his uh, pursuit of, uh, of stopping Drac and, and helping the world, whereas Ratchet's a little more selfish and wants to do it for certain other reasons, not to save the world, but to, you know, help maybe get some something for himself out of it. So, but as the story moves along, of course, the two become friends and Ratchet eventually uh, stops being so selfish and, and, and becomes more like Clank. And uh, Clank also loosens up to a certain degree and, and takes on, you know, some of Ratchet's good traits. So uh, it's a super long game. Um, you go, you you can go back and forth between all the different planets that you come along during the game um, and because uh, sometimes you can't always complete all the missions on a planet you have to go back and get a certain device or weapon or whatever uh, in order to go back and get what you're missing on another planet so you, you kind of hopscotch throughout the galaxy and uh, complete certain missions that are vital to the game other ones are voluntary if, if you want to uh, a lot of times the voluntary ones um, you don't have to do but they're great for upgrading your weapons and your character's health and stuff like that so they'll definitely pay off in the end when you get to the final boss fight because it, it's not an easy one that's for sure it's it's not impossible but it, it'll test you that's for sure it, it's pretty tough so and uh along the way there's all these different weapons you can get uh that that uh, depending on the enemy you're facing or the different situations you're facing uh will be more effective than others and uh yeah it's just this super fun um adventure that uh you know when i think of playstation um ratchet and clank are you know one of those franchises that kind of spring to mind in you know maybe the top five that you would identify as 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 you know defining playstation as a system sort of thing so uh and it's a nice long series with lots of games and even a movie and stuff so uh, you'll have no shortage of material to to play um in that in that franchise so last one another video game this one for the nintendo switch mud runner american wilds so if you'll remember not that long ago i i mentioned the original spin tires mud runner game which uh took place in siberia you're you're basically in charge of these fleet of vehicles and you need to help develop the land by transporting loads of uh lumber to the to the lumber mill uh this is the same thing this the exact same premise and when i bought this game i first thought okay it's going to be the same sort of thing but it's just going to be in the american wilds with different trucks different terrain and stuff like that so i was very disappointed when i started up the game and you know i always start with the tutorials and stuff so that i get used to the different types of vehicles and, and different types of missions they're asking me to do 
the tutorials in this game are basically all the same as they were in the original game. So that's that was just a wash. It was like, okay, well, I've already done these. I did them anyways just to get some playtime on the game. But they were the exact same. There might have been one or two extra ones thrown in where that featured new vehicles and stuff. But for the most part, the bulk of it was all the same as the original game. Then, and so I thought it would stop there. I thought that was the you know, the only kind of repeat they would do. I thought when you got into the single player actual missions that it would be all all new and all different. And again there, 90% of it was was just repeat from uh, from the original game. The exact same missions, exact same titles of the missions. And uh, there was only maybe two or three or four, four max, I think only two or three though, uh, single player missions that were totally brand new and looked like they weren't in Russia, looked like they were somewhere else that looked original to this game and not repeats from, from the original game. So I just kind of, I played those, those two or three that were, that were the original, the new originals. And, and then I just put it away. Cause it was like, what am, what am I going to play these again for? Like, and, and, and this game is, is not a game that you can just throw on and replay because you like, like you could a super Mario or something because you can go through those games really fast. Uh, this game, you know, the missions are long and they're slow because you're you're trekking through wilderness, running over logs and having to winch yourself out of mud pools, uh, with 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 these trucks and stuff. So it, like it takes a long time. Each mission takes, you know, it could take a minimum of an hour. It could take you a few hours to get the whole thing done or more. So it's not something you want to replay, you know, because it's 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 a big time investment and I. I'm not sure what you're really getting out of it by replaying it. So I was very disappointed in this game. Everything looked great, of course, but it was just so much rehash of what the first game was that it was just kind of a, you know, a Debbie Downer on that game. So if they'd, if they'd actually made it a brand new original game with uh, the newer trucks uh, specific to this game that they had in it and, and some new terrain, it would have been fantastic. I would have played it as thoroughly as I played the first game, but but since it was mostly, you know, 90% repeat of the original game. I just played the new stuff and then and then put it away. I, I couldn't be bothered with uh, rehashing everything else that I'd already done. So so that was disappointing. So in case you're you've played the first game or you've played this game and are thinking of the first game, uh just get one of them. That's all you need. <laughs> so uh so that was disappointing, but uh these are the things that happen in life, right? First world problems I call them. So that's the five things I got up to a while back and I've got Three more piles so you will see me at least three more days in the next three four or five days uh with more videos so uh stay tuned if you are interested if not i don't blame you toodles <laughs>